to whisper of Dolce Mia, Dolce Mia. We are sitting definitely not in Florence, in the Uffizi, if you couldn't tell. We are in the bunker, aka my windowless apartment, staring at our separate laptop screens, looking at La Primavera by Botticelli via the internet. <laughs> David, not the statue, my roommate Emily's, they're not labeling anything right now, just did a beautiful rendition of his <laughs> own composition. We don't exactly know what to call it. However. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, <laughs> and Italian admirers, but not true Italians are observing, but uh, such as a really great poster of Anthony Bourdain opening a bottle of what looks like to be wine with his teeth. Mm. And, uh, oh, I gotta love Anthony. Mm -hmm. He's holding that pan real nice. And one of Kira's roommate's sorority sister's father, if you could keep up with that, Michael. There's a really great, um, looks like a school portrait of yes, him. Yes, Alessandro would approve. Yeah, I, I think. A.K.A. Alessandro de Mariano Devani Phil Pepe. <laughs> or Botticelli. You know. You know. You gotta shorten that. Was, he was uh, <clears throat> born in Florence and was initially trained as a goldsmith. Uh, but like many millennials, probably had an identity crisis and began painting. Mm. He began his apprenticeship as a painter at the age of 14, which was middle-aged, I'm assuming, back then. <laughs> we can check. I mean, our history... I think it was 45 when he died, so, oh, yeah, pretty, yeah, it's pretty it's close. Like, you know, what would you call thirds? He was just... He was a third, third life <laughs> crisis, <laughs> which indicates that he had a longer and more expansive education than most Renaissance painters. So, following a stint living in Rome, you know, that papacy, though, uh. <laughs> Botticelli returned to Florence in 1482. It was then that he completed both the birth of Venus and the Primavera. I, but I think the, the birth of Venus was, was painted yeah, after. It was, that it was, was after. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, like, um, Primavera was, like, um... 1482, 1482, and the birth of Venus was... 1485. <laughs> Both pieces were commissioned. It's been, it's been clarified. They were commissioned for different places. La Primavera, most likely for the marriage of Lorenzo di Pier Francesco. But by 1499, both were at the Medici Castello, indicating that the two were a pair. Well, getting back to the to the painting that we are looking at right now, <clears throat> La Primavera by Botticelli, as um, described earlier, depicts a really lovely scene of mythological creatures, and from left to right we've got Mercury, then we've got the Three Graces of the Charities, then we've got Venus in the center, who above her is Cupid, and then <clears throat> continuing to the right we've got Flora, Chloris, and this really creepy figure poking out of the trees is Zephyr. Now, some of these identities have been questioned over time. Um, is Mercury really Mercury? Is it Mars? And there's been questions because Mars is the agricultural guardian, and they're obviously in some oh, kind of garden. Okay. Oh, the <clears throat> garden, you know, fertility, etc. Yeah, but we see that um, in the male figure's right hand, he's holding a caduceus, which is the symbol, one of the symbols of Mercury. Um, what is interesting though about this is that usually Mercury is holding this in his left hand, however in this depiction he's holding it in his right, which may have caused some question, but um, <clears throat> like I said, I think some, some argue that it is in fact Mars because he is considered an agricultural guardian and they're obviously in a garden. The next question of identity is, is this, um, these two female figures furthermost to the right, the one adorned in flowers those and spreading them. Is those it those beautiful folds? Look at those folds. And the detail in that, in, that in, print in her though. clothing. Yeah, oh. I, I don't even want to render that in my costume renderings. <laughs> Good thing that <laughs> you're I'm not, not a designer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, is this floor? Um, it's also, you know, 
thought that she might be a Primavera, which would make more sense considering that is the title of the painting and Primavera is considered to be the representation of spring, but Flora is also considered to be the goddess of flowers. Um, there's also this um, idea that this the furthermost right female character who is being grabbed by Zephyr is Chloris, who Zephyr um, claimed for himself. And it is mm. said in one of um, the Roman tales that Chloris was ravished by Zephyr, and when she was ravished, flowers began to spring from her mouth, um, spring from her mouth, and she became Flora. So it's this idea of is this Flora? Is this Chloris? Is this an identity where we see both of her? Is this oh. uh, transcendence in time? Um, I guess we don't know. Botticelli is dead. We can't really ask. I see this in the club all the time. All the time. I guess things really don't change. The identity crisis, the patriarchy. You know, but we, maybe we should get. I should. We should get back to. Yeah, because, you know, the question is, what does it really mean? We can't, we can't know these identities of these characters. We don't know exactly what it means. It's something, you know, argued about in anything in art history. Um, it is considered to be one of Botticelli's more convoluted works. Um, the Birth of Venus is pretty straightforward in its representation of it's a, just the mythological figure of Venus, and her birth and his portraits can't really be misconstrued in any way because they're portraits of figures. They're no, there's no interpretation really needed to be taken in those. Um, and one of the interpretations of this work is that it's an illustration of Neoplatonic love. The idea that love, the emotion, is what binds all things together. And it can sustain all. Um, all of this based upon the fact that humans are inherently social animals. And we will go crazy <laughs> if we are alone. Yeah, that's actually a really big um, topic within the Catholic Church is isolation. And that's why they don't like God's up. And sin isn't... Um, is considered to be an isolation from God, which actually this is um, a great segue into why neo this Neoplatonic sense in this painting is really interesting in this height of the Italian Renaissance. Um, Neoplatonism stresses a fact that man still has a divinity within its nature and that they're not just human. Um, and this is a huge no-no within the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church believes that man no longer holds divinity and it is within their loss of divinity that they are able to sin, that they are culpable and they are guilty and that it is only Christ who is capable of having both a divine and human nature. Uh, only Christ. Love that. He's the special, he's the special one and it's interesting because mm. Neoplatonism became popularized by the de Medici family with their connection with the philosopher Marsilio Vicino. Um, Ooh, uh, it was just this heightened the renaissance of bringing the Greek and Roman culture back into Italy. Exactly, and I think this is something really important to note further in the works of Botticelli, especially with the next work in this um, in this series of paintings, The Birth of Venus, um, which was painted after like Primavera. Three years after Primavera. Yeah, and Venus is depicted nude, which is really interesting because um, there wasn't really any other new depictions in art at this time, except if it was a depiction of Eve, so that's really interesting because it's this other divergence that Botticelli is taking by depicting a nude figure that isn't religious, but in fact mythological and connects to pagan religions. Ah, uh, paganism. So you could call him basic. Maybe. Mm. He's trying to, trying to be a hipster, I think. Uh, you know? okay. Botticelli's patron, Lorenzo de' Medici, makes sense because it was commissioned for another Medici for the marriage. Um, really stressing all that fertility and love. Mm. No pressure there, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> The scene being set in an orange grove, which was the Medici symbol, and the jewelry, if you can see, worn by the Three Graces, are red and blue, the colors of the Medici family. A lot of Botticelli's work being commissioned by Lorenzo, it makes sense that the inspiration mm -hmm. of the yeah. money right. would with The money's gotta go, and then he's, he's gotta, gotta get that done. I mean, like, we all know as artists, we're barely making anything. We right. just have to make oh, yeah. somebody happy to produce the art. And I think that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what the case was with this painting. Mm -hmm. And something that I, I find interesting with more connections between the birth of Venus and Prima Bella is that both Venus and Zephyr and a depiction of spring are, both, are in both paintings. 
and um, Venus is depicted in with a red cloak draped around her body in Primavera, which is also um, seen being held up by the depiction of spring and the birth of Venus, and then also a connection between Zephyr and Primavera. He's wearing a blue cloak or blue fabric draped around his body, as in with the birth of Venus. However, he's depicted with such a green-blue hue to his skin um, in La Primavera versus the birth of Venus. I, I wonder what the interpretation between um, the two paintings of the characterization of Zephyr, how that's well, different. Also, personally, the painting encompasses the beauty of the female form within the folds of the fabric, um, and Botticelli's appreciation of the female form, even if it is a bit objectification, mm -hmm. sample of that, is a precursor to the study of Venus. The next nude. Oh, it looks as if David is ready for another round, so... Here From the look. bunker. Here's David on Botticelli and his work. So, I feel like sexualism, in some senses, is more sexualized when you don't reveal things. And that's what Botticelli does. In comparison to Venus or in general? Or to the birth no, of Venus or in, in general? In that. Okay. In that sense. Mm -hmm. When it's Venus coming out of the clam, mm -hmm. that's extremely sexualized, obviously. But, like... In the Renaissance era, and that's the late Renaissance <laughs> era, I feel like it's way more sexualized when you don't reveal. Mm -hmm. And that's my opinion on that. Well, thank you for your opinion. I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm going to give it to you. I don't care. I'm not embarrassed. Little whisper of Dolce.